pastor's been talking about a series on there is more to you have you been enjoying that yes and um as i was preparing i was really excited and i'm excited to bring god's word to you this morning and it is on the same topic and i'm so excited for what god is revealing to us week after week about who we are in christ jesus can we open to john 10 10 it says here the thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy but i have come that you and i may have life and have it to the full i think the kjv version says in abundance can we all say in abundance that's a beautiful version that says in abundance abundance means overflowing fullness there is no lack there is nothing we need more there's more than enough not just for myself but to give to others also and it just means all good things abundance right and that is what christ came to give us if you can open to proverbs 11:28 what is this abundance a little bit more about proverbs 11:28 proverbs 11:28 says he that trusts in his riches shall perish but the righteous he's talking about you and i all right the righteous shall flourish like a branch flourishing means growing right everything green uh, things being fruitful flourish can we read that together the righteous the righteous will thrive like a green leaf it also says flourish another version just now said flourish right and um, that is the righteous that's you and i can we open to psalm 92:12 again it's talking about the righteous so who is the righteous i am the righteous so it's talking about you and i if you have a doubt about whether you are the righteous there is a verse for you corinthians 5:21 corinthians 5:21 says you are the righteous sorry yes first corinthians 5:21 says sorry second corinthians you don't need to open it but second corinthians says you are the righteousness of god so no doubt about that right so these are these verses are about you it says so that we may become the righteousness of god you and i are the righteousness of god so no doubt on that going back to psalm 92:12 psalm 92:12 so this is for you and i he says i the righteous can we read it saying i the righteous i the righteous will flourish like a palm tree i will grow like a cedar of lebanon lebanon is still a country and um it is a beautiful country and on their flag as their national plant and on their flag they have the cedar tree the cedar is a very big tree i'm just going to give you a few points about this tree it grows up to 130 feet all right that's huge very very tall trees they are known for their longevity which means they are very they live for really really long hundreds of years they don't die very easily and a width of the cedar of lebanon especially there are many cedars but the cedars of lebanon they have a width of around 8 feet that's their width okay 8 feet that is amazing and one of the other characteristics about this tree is it does not rot very quickly okay worms try to attack it but it does not rot very quickly and it is the same tree from which was the wood was taken to build the temple of god solomon built and while god gave him instructions he said choose the cedars of lebanon to build the temple so it is a very unique tree and god is saying you and i will flourish like the cedar of lebanon such an amazing promise of god can you imagine you're going to live so long not old and tired and dying but well and strong with good health for really long and not only that nothing is going to get you to rot which means destruction calamities things pulling you down emotionally mental traumas none of that is going to touch you he's saying wow that is what you and i are called to be 
The Lebanon, cedars of Lebanon also have a very sweet smell. It's like fragrance. Naturally, they are fragrant. So these are the characteristics of the cedars of Lebanon. And God is saying, there is more to you. When the fall happened, Adam and Eve were living in a beautiful garden, which probably had the cedars, I don't know. It had beautiful trees. Everything was flourishing. Everything was in abundance. But the fall happened and there was a curse that came upon Adam. And according to the curse, Genesis 3, 17 to 19, he says, from now on, you will toil. You'll have to work really hard and you're only going to get thorns and thistles. You have to sweat, you have to sweat, you have to just struggle to get through the day. They were called to live in abundance, but the curse pushed them into a mode of survival. Every day was a survival mode. I have to get through today. I don't know how my mood is going to be. I don't know how the situation is going to be. I somehow paid my rent this month. Abba, somehow I just pulled through this health issue. Somehow I pulled through this situation with my relationship. That is what the curse pushed them into. Survival mode. We are thinking that if we have enough to get through the day, thank you, Lord, that is a curse because that is called survival mode. Many of us are happy and content on survival mode. But do you know that that is a curse? Have you ever thought about it? And we kept seeing, keep saying, thank you, Lord, that I got through today. That is not what God has called you for. He has called you to flourish. He has called you for abundance. He has called you for more than enough. The opposite of abundance is not poverty, but adversity. It's an English word. What does adversity mean? Adversity means problems. Many of us have health problems, financial problems, friendship problems, problems everywhere with everything. That is a curse because that is the opposite of abundance. It is adversity. Appa, I just got out of one situation. Thank God. You sit down and you get a phone call. The next adversity is on its way. That is not living in abundance. That's living under the curse of the fall, which means you are getting through from one adversity to the next, to the next, to the next. The Lord has not called you for adversity. He has called you for abundance. And that is a promise. But we are very happy to go from one survi surviving one situation to the next. I will survive this because the Lord is with me. God does not want you to go from one situation to another surviving because you are more than a survivor. You are called to be a thriver. Have you heard of the word thrive? Survive means I get through one situation, I go to the next. I somehow, the Lord provided my rent this month and then you go into surviving, surviving, surviving till the next rent date. God is not calling you to survive. And he is calling you to thrive, which means you are growing, you are having abundance, you are having more than enough, not to say, okay, the next rent date is coming and now what do I do? No, that is surviving. That is a curse. And then you cannot say the Lord provided for me and therefore I paid my rent this month. That is living in a surviving mindset and that is living under the curse. But an abundance mindset is saying, I have more than enough to pay for my next month's rent also. The people of the world say that you need to have at least three months rent in advance in your bank account. That is abundance. Your situation may be different. You may be having the three months advance, but you may be struggling with no orders for business, or you may be struggling with a relationship issue. You may be struggling with something else. I don't know what it is, but if you think you are going from one day to another, just scraping through and praising God for it, you are not called to survive. You are called to thrive. Let me tell you and explain this to you. The children of Israel, they were taken out of Egypt. And they were called to go 
to a promised land. God told them about the promised land. He showed them so many miracles. And these people, my goodness, they have seen things we could have only imagined. And yet, they wandered in the wilderness. That should have taken them 11 days journey to get to the promised land. But how many years did they wander? 40 years. You know why? Because they had a slave mentality. They were always looking at survival. We need water. How do we do this? How do we survive? But he's saying, I'm taking you to a land flowing with milk and honey. But they were constantly looking at survival mode. How do I get through today? We need manna. He's saying, I'm going to provide you. Don't worry. You're going to have an abundance. But, but let's collect some more. Do you see the clear instructions God was giving them? Don't collect extra. Wait. I have called you into abundance. Don't go into survival mode. But these people were constantly in survival mode because they had a slave mentality. They were not free people. They were constantly under the slave mentality and therefore the survival mode would kick in. Somebody is going to come and take away what I have. Somebody is going to take away. Somebody is going to come and hit me. Somebody is going to come and kick me. Somebody is going to dishonor me. Somebody is not going to keep their promise. Somebody is going to let me down. And so the survival mode would kick in. And therefore, he said to them, you are not going to enter the promised land, except for two people. Who are they? Who are the two people that were going to enter the promised land? Joshua and Caleb were to enter the promised land because they did not have a slave mentality. They had a kingdom mentality of abundance. They saw the promised land and they said, yes. This is what we were called for. But the rest of them were in survival mode because they were of the slave mentality. And that entire generation had to die. All of them had to die. And a new generation had to be born that did not know what it was to live as slaves. And he said, now these people will go into the promised land. Are you a slave to your circumstances or to your past Many of us are slaves to our past because this happened to me and therefore I cannot expect good things. This happened to me in the past and therefore I am scared to expect. So I will go into survival mode. Destiny's Child had a song, I'm a survivor. It was a big hit and everybody said, I'm a survivor, all right? But no, we are not survivors. We are thrivers. Don't be proud about your surviving. Don't be proud about your surviving. Aim to thrive because that is what you're called for. You are called to be a cedar of Lebanon, strong through adversity. You are called for abundance. You are not made for adversity. So today, if there is a past which is holding you captive in your mind, enslaving you, not allowing you to enter into your promised land because you are thinking, my past, this happened to me, so I cannot go forward. I need to preserve myself. I need to be careful. I need to be safe. You don't need to do any of that. Get rid of your slave mentality, for you are called to a land flowing with milk and honey. Get rid of your slave mentality. Being a slave to the children of Israel meant remembering the past. Do you remember? They remembered, they said, oh, I, I remember the garlics. I remember the fish of Egypt. They were living in the past, enslaved to survival mode. Transformation comes. Romans 12, 2 says transformation comes when you, when you, Renew your mind. Can you put your hands on your head and say, my mind is renewed this morning. You are prepared to see your transformation. It's as simple as that. Renew your mind and you will see your transformation. The children of Israel had a slave mentality because they remembered the past. But they have a problem with believing whether he is willing to do it on their behalf because they are having a sin mentality. I did this in the past. I did this in the past and therefore I am not moving forward. God is very loving. 
God is delivering, but he will not do it for me because I am not worthy. This morning, you are not a survivor. You are a thriver. You are the righteous of the Lord. And he is willing to do everything for you so that you can thrive and not just survive. The next person I would like to point you out to is Jacob. Jacob, Jacob's mother positioned him for a blessing, for all the blessings. He received it and he started running. He is now in survival mode. All right. He's running, he's running, but he is a carrier of the blood. But he is now a survivor. He is running to his uncle's house and he wants to survive. But there again, God meets him multiple times and he is telling him, you are the carrier of promise. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. And Jacob's mind soaked that in. And he said, I am not a survivor. I am a thriver. And so he says to his father-in-law, I know how to make things happen for me. You put me in the position of most disadvantage you do what you want to to me you make my situation a disadvantage but i can show you that i will thrive and not just survive his uncle thought he was coming there to survive he did not know that he carried the blessing of thriving and not just surviving the world is looking at you and saying oh they have come from another place to survive here in Bangalore. You are not here in Bangalore to survive. You are here to thrive. The place where you have come running out of saying, okay, this is my safe home. This is not your place to survive. This is a place where you are going to thrive. They might have thrown you out of the place where you thought was home, where you thought was where you belonged. And you feel like now you are running. You need to survive. Let me tell you, you are not running. You are positioning yourself to thrive where you thought jacob was surviving he was not surviving he was of the thriving mindset and that is why he was able to accept god's creative ideas god says to him all the white sheep are now going to become spot and let me tell you i did a lot of research on this there is no scientific proof to it there is nothing scientific. It's just a miracle. God said it and it happened. And what did Jacob do? He said, yes, do it. He accepted it. And for his unbelief, maybe he cut a few, you know, stems and barks. And he said, okay, these are all speckled. And when the sheep look at it, it'll also become speckled. But he was open to God's creative ideas. You know, when we are in survival mode, our mind does not work in creativity. This is a psychological fact. When you are in survival mode, when you are trying to get from one thing to another, barely scraping through with your life, you cannot be creative. So if you are struggling with creativity right now, saying nothing is coming to my mind, there is a blank. I don't know what is happening with my life. I don't know where I am going. Let me tell you, that is a sign that you are in survival mode because God is a God of creative ideas for your life, for your business, for your future plans, for your relationships, for who you are, for what you need to do, for where you need to go. He is a God full of creative ideas. And the word of God says, God has plans to prosper you and not to harm you and to give you your expected end, which means you need to do the expectation here. But if you're stuck in survival mode, you have no expectations except for to go from one day to the next. And saying, I'm barely pulling. So where is the expectation there? The expectation is all drowned in survival. But God is saying, I am prospering you. I have called you into abundance. And for that, you need to have your mind relaxed. For that, you need to believe that you are the righteousness of God. If you are still sitting in your past, if you are still sitting in survival mode, if you are still sitting in everybody's after me, they're going to kill me, the world is after me. Now, a lot of us have that. It's called the victim mentality. What is it called? 
you need to get rid of your survival attitude you need to get rid of your victim mentality right you need to get rid of everybody's against me and so i need to survive somehow he is a god who turns the evil into good he is a god who is saying i am with you i am not against you i am for you what more do you need but the world is against me why do you care about them you need to get rid of your survival attitude you need to get rid of your victim mentality right a lot of us can identify with that victim mentality she did this to me he did th- did that to me and therefore my life is like this and it stops us from receiving our promises because we go into survival mode god will provide for you through those same people who are victimizing you laban's sheep is the same thing which multiplied it's laban's sheep only it's not somebody else's sheep in genesis 28 god promises jacob and says jacob i'm going to bless you and he says yes lord then in genesis 32 you know jacob is carrying that blessing in his mind he is of the blessing mentality can you say blessing mentality he knows he is the blessed he knows he is abundance he knows he is he is going to be a blessing to the nations that's the promise right and so you go on to this one incident where jacob is wrestling with god he's wrestling with god and he says to him unless you bless me i am not letting you go and you would think maybe the guy needs a blessing no because poor fellow he must be really struggling he got kicked out of his father's house his brother must be chasing him he got kicked out of his father in law's house no 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 that's not the situation here when jacob says bless me the man had so much that he had groups and groups and groups of people that belonged to him carrying riches that belonged to him he had cattle and sheep and everything that belonged to him and at that point in time he is saying bless me because he is saying all this is survival can you believe that this is survival i got this in survival mode but i know there is more to me i am abundance i am called to thrive i am called to grow i am called to increase i am called to be a blessing to the nations isn't that amazing you and i need that blessing mentality and not a surviving mentality it's not enough it's not enough it's not enough because you are in survival mode the lord is shifting your mind today to thriving mode amen you know peniel when he met with god and he said bless me he said i saw god face to face and the place is called peniel in psalm 34:5 last night i had finished preparing my sermon and this verse popped up from nowhere and i know it is a blessing for you it says those who look to him are radiant their faces are never covered with shame peniel means i saw the face of god and today you are people that see the face of god so whatever shame you are facing whatever shame and humiliation you have been through no more no more no more instead it is being replaced with joy is what is being replaced for the shame that you have faced that is thriving no more shame and i would like to point you to the last set of people who were thrivers and not survivors there were these two women or actually there were three women a mother in law and her two daughters in law their husbands died the mother is returning as a widow with her two widowed daughters in law and they are not israelites the daughters in law are not israelites they are not people of the promise and one say i'm going back home because the mother in law is a lovely lady and she says you know what i don't want you struggling so one says okay i'm going to go back to my family but one holds on and her name is ruth and she said i will follow you i will follow you they come into the promised land back into the promised land they had left for a while and when they come back into the promised land their mentality changes 
All this while, they were survivors. They come in and Ruth goes to pick up, you know, to survive. She's going into a land of somebody there and she's going to survive. She picks up a little bit and she comes home. And the mother-in-law is asking her about her day. How was your day today? She said, well, I got a little more than what the others got because somebody was kind on me. And so she was happy. She said, oh, we have more. We have survived. Thank you. And now we shall go on living like this. And Jesus would not be born. But you see, they were not happy with the little extra that they got also. Because immediately, Naomi, the mother-in-law says, this is not enough. This is not enough. Because I suddenly remembered there is a person here who can change our condition. He is called the covenant redeemer. Can you all loudly say covenant redeemer? Covenant redeemer is Boaz. Boaz can change your situation. These women have gone through the most difficult times of their lives. It's not easy when you lose somebody you love. And especially as women, they are in a huge disadvantage. Everything is against them, culturally, financially, position-wise, in every way, they are in a huge disadvantage. The best they can have is a little extra. That was more than enough. But Naomi says, no, I am now reminded that there is a covenant redeemer and therefore we can be bold, we can take some risks, and we can say, we want more. And through Ruth, Jesus, the lineage comes through. Right? Ruth is in the lineage of Jesus. Her name is mentioned there because she decided, rather her mother-in-law decided, that we are not called to be survivors. Can you all say, I am a thriver. That is what these two women decided that day. They said, I'm not, we're not just going to get through the situation. We are going to do something. We are going to depend on our covenant redeemer. They place their trust in him. And Naomi says, don't worry. Sit back and relax. The man will not rest till he has restored us, redeemed us. Redeemed is a very powerful word, you know. It means giving back your honor. What a powerful word. Here is a widow. You know, go back a hundred years in India, even now in many places, widows are not honored. There are many times their heads are shaved off. They have to wear white clothes. They cannot come in front of a good occasion. When people go out somewhere, they would come out to make sure that there are no widows on the road. Right? They will come out and say, okay, are there any widows? And they will also announce, we are going out, we are going out, we are going out, and all the widows have to run into their homes. Can you imagine? What a terrible condition. Means there is no honor. You'd rather die than live like that, right? There is no honor where people spit on you. If their day goes wrong, they would say it's all because of that widow. Can you imagine? They don't perform well in their work, and they'll blame it on the widow. They don't do well in life. They've had a bad day and blame it on the widow. That is the condition of Ruth. But Naomi says, there is a covenant redeemer. That is the exact word used in the Bible. It says, he is your covenant redeemer, which means he's coming into a covenant with us. He has the right to redeem us. Jesus is your covenant redeemer. He has redeemed you to restore to you everything that has been lost. And not just in survival mode. Here, take a little extra. Take a little extra to go through the month. Take a little extra to go through the situation. No, he's saying, I am giving you in abundance and you are now going to be restored. And you are no more a widow. You have become the wife of the landlord. Can you imagine that? She was going and hiding behind the maids and picking up a little extra, right? Picking up a little extra to survive. And now she will stand in front of them and order them and tell them what to do. That is who you are called to be. Are you in hiding because you are ashamed? Are you in hiding because of 
the situation you are in right now? Are you ashamed of the people around you saying, what will my neighbors say? What will my relatives say? I used to be so well, you know. I used to live so well. My grandfather, great name he had. Now I've become like this. You are not to be hiding behind your grandfather's name because you are a thriver. You are a blessing to the nation. There was one thing they did. Naomi said, fix your eyes on Boaz. Boaz means Christ Jesus, your Redeemer. This morning, fix your eyes on Jesus and your situation is going to flip in a moment. You are going to go from dishonor to greatly honored. You are going to go from survival to abundance. You are going from adversity to blessed. You are no more cursed. You are called to live in abundance. And there's only one thing to do for this. Constantly renew your mind to who you are. I am not enslaved by my past. I am not running from people that are against me. I am not a victim. And I am not going to be held down by whatever has happened to me and around. I am fixing my eyes on Boaz, my covenant redeemer. And he has redeemed me from everything that is keeping me bound. Nothing can keep me in my situation. I am called to thrive. And in all of this, there's one powerful phrase, one secret that Naomi teaches Ruth. She says, sit back and relax. He is doing it for you. Sit back and relax. Because in survival mode, your mind is constantly troubled. In thriving mode, sit back and relax. Can we just stand to our feet this morning? You have been in survival mode for too long. It's time for you to come into thriving mode. Be it for your finances, be it for your emotional condition, be it for your relationships, be it for your future, be it for your hopes and your dreams. You are only thinking in survival mode. Come out of survival mode. And your declaration today is, I am a thriver, I am not a survivor. I am a thriver, I am not a survivor. Make that your, your slogan going forward. You can go back home and read more about the word thrive itself. It means growth. It means abundance. It means new things. It means walking a new path. There's so many amazing things in abundance.